How was the junior chipmunk meeting, dear? It was good. Barbara Jo Allen ate a fly. Well, with beef at 68 cents a pound, I can't blame her. A show that takes place in the 50s, already in the 80s when it aired, drawing attention to high inflationary prices. Could you even imagine thinking 68 cents a pound was a lot? The average price in the United States per pound for beef is now about $5.30. If the cost of everything keeps going up, it'll wreck the economy and make life a living hell for American families. Inflation in the U.S. hit a record high in June 2022. Consumer prices soared by 9.1% compared to a year prior, the largest annual increase since 1981. While wages are rising, they're not keeping up with inflation. Wage growth has been consistent with an about 4.5% inflation rate. Meanwhile, as of November 2022, inflation was at 7.1%. And Americans are feeling the brunt. Two-thirds of workers say their pay isn't keeping up with these higher prices. Part of the misconception is people believe, oh, if I'm only getting a 4% salary increase and inflation is 77 I'm getting a pay decrease. That's not true. So what exactly is happening and why? Why aren't salaries keeping up with inflation? Inflation measures how much more expensive a set of goods and services has become over a certain period of time, usually a year. There are a number of reasons why inflation fluctuates, but at the heart of it, it's basic economic principles, supply and demand. More money in people's hands means increased purchasing power. With more demand for goods and services and supply remaining the same, prices will go up. The COVID-19 pandemic is an extreme example, but a good illustration of my point here. At the onset, the world shut down. Consumers weren't spending and instead saving. The government flooded the market with cash. A national eviction moratorium, loan payment pause, and other initiatives put more money in Americans' hands. As restrictions started easing, people began spending again. But at that point, companies weren't producing as much due to supply chain disruptions caused by closed borders, labor shortages, and shipping delays. Money supply growing at a faster rate than the economy's ability to produce goods and services causes inflation. This time, record-breaking inflation. A key inflation gauge is sounding alarm bells, and it could have a big impact in grocery stores especially. The latest UN Global Price Index shows food costs reached their highest level in nearly a decade last month, thanks in part to supply and logistics issues. As the pandemic was winding down, in February 2022, Russia's invasion of Ukraine only exacerbated the pressure, raising commodity prices and increasing supply chain issues. Just like inflation, Wages are driven by changes in supply and demand, but for labor. They're determined by market and demographic factors. So when job availability, as well as the number of people who qualify and are looking for a specific job change, so do wages. Lori Whisper is a managing director at Willis Towers Watson. For more than 35 years, she's helped companies set their compensation strategies. Pretty much everybody's compensation philosophy is grounded in the desire to attract and retain employees by paying competitively. Organizations look at what is the cost of labor? What do I have to pay in a given market for a given skill set or job? And that's how I'm going to set my pay rates. They don't look at the cost of living. Organizations typically determine salary budgets a few years out. So making sudden and significant adjustments in wages is unlikely. Companies like to wait and see if market conditions will be long lasting before making those changes. How would you feel if your boss gave you a raise and then shortly after cut your salary? Most organizations do take a relative conservative approach to looking at base salary increases. Even a one or a one and a half percent increase can represent hundreds of millions of dollars for an organization. They need to be good governors of those payroll dollars. That's part of how they run their business, a very important part. Organizations down the road do not want to be in a position of feeling or believing or factually overpaying their people. And they don't want to find themselves in a position where they have to reduce wages or even worse, cut jobs. Layoffs. We, you know, just today, Twitter, uh, half, half the staff. You see Lyft, Apple, Amazon. It goes on. U.S.-based employers cut nearly 34,000 jobs in October 2022. Technology companies took the lead with about 9,600 cuts for a total of more than 28,000 cuts so far this year, up 162 percent 
from the same period last year. The high-tech industry, e-commerce, has been one of the highest paying industries in the U.S. Their salary budgets last year were higher than anybody else's, meaning they were giving greater salary increases than most other industries. So that's a, a good real-life example of what happens when you overspend relative to what others are providing in your competitive labor markets. We simply haven't seen anything like this since the 1970s. Record inflation has only made things worse. Still, organizations typically don't consider inflation and the cost of living when determining wages. While economists say salaries can keep up with inflation, Whisper says they shouldn't. I know that's going to be controversial for me to say. As employees, as people, we get to make choices on what we buy and how we use our buying power. Companies don't tell us where to live and what to buy. As a company, if I looked at the cost of living and said, okay, I'm just going to take the national average of inflation and match my annual salary increase budgets to that, I'd be overpaying what the market pays for almost every job. That overpayment might cause me to do some things in the future that would hurt everybody. Like what we're seeing in the tech industry. When the salary increase budgets drop as a result of economic downturn, they kind of stick. They're not very elastic. Inflation goes up and down quite a lot. Salary increase budgets don't because they're driven by different things. What most organizations do is they compensate workers in other ways that won't automatically drive all future earnings up regardless of economic conditions. For example, when many organizations perform well, they reward their employees with bonuses. Profits go up and down. Financial performance goes up and down. So variable pay programs are best suited to reward for those. When we have low inflation and high salary budgets, employees benefit. But at no time in the past when our buying power was greater than the cost of things we bought, did we say, oh, let's lower it because we want to match that. Employers also have hidden increases in compensation, the increase in cost of benefits and attracting new talent. And some organizations are seeing their costs go up in different ways. Travel nurse jobs pay substantially more than what they were getting paid to work in a hospital. But in a lot of hospitals around the country, they're seeing their nurses quit, sign up as travel nurses, and the hospital's so short-staffed, they're hiring the travel nurses, so it's the exact same nurse coming back at a higher wage. However, that increase in salary is offset with no benefits or job security. Overall, middle-income Americans are feeling the largest impact from inflation. Higher-earning workers were more likely to say their incomes held up with the increase in prices. 53% of those earning $100,000 or more per year compared to 34% of those earning less than $50,000. The biggest increase in labor force participation among people with higher education and among people with less education, like just a high school degree, and it's the people in the middle who have maybe a two-year degree where we've seen the slowest recovery in going back to work. Typically, lower-income families struggle the most during high inflationary times. However, in the past year on average, low-wage workers experienced real wage growth, wage growth after adjusting for inflation, while middle- and high-wage workers didn't. On average, wages have kept up with inflation at the bottom end, but that doesn't mean that there aren't lots and lots of people where their wages haven't kept up. Maybe their market conditions are such that there hasn't been forces pushing the wages up. Maybe they're in a job that they just haven't been able to change because of their circumstances or their childcare. So what would happen if salaries did keep up? We want wages to go up. We just want them to go up at a, at a level that's sustainable with, and consistent with 2% inflation. In November 2022, Federal Reserve Chair Powell said the Fed doesn't want to see a wage price spiral. Rising wages increasing the demand for goods, causing prices to rise, increasing the demand for higher wages, which then leads to higher production costs and more pressure to increase prices, creating a cycle. You know, once you see it, you're, you're in trouble. We get this wage price spiral where workers want a 5% raise because they anticipate next year there'll be 5% inflation, but 
their action makes it a self-fulfilling prophecy. We get 5% inflation, so they do the same thing the next year, and we get sort of stuck at that high inflation rate. The most effective way to keep wages trailing inflation is by changing jobs. Those who switched jobs between April 2021 and March 2022 saw earnings jump by nearly 10% from a year earlier. Those who stayed saw wages fall nearly 2%. Another way employees can see a boost in their earnings is through cost of living allowances. Although those may disappear if inflation goes down again. There are also opportunities to negotiate for other perks like free meals or snacks, childcare or housing assistance, more paid time off, student loan assistance, a transportation reimbursement, transfer to a location where the cost of living is lower, or an extended timeline for remote work. Every organization has a different philosophy when it comes to compensation. They create strategic plans, taking into consideration the industry, competition, company culture, financial health, and goals for the future. For some, that means trying to make sure wages keep up with inflation. But for the most part, that's just not how it works. And if that's a problem, it's up to you, the employee, to decide your next move. Other than, you know, treating people poorly and taking advantage of them, there is no right philosophy. And the whole key with, with your compensation philosophy is what are you doing so that you feel you're doing the right thing for your organization and for your people? It's always a good idea when there's lots of opportunities out there to take a look and see if you might just find something a little bit better for you. And as for keeping inflation down, the government and the Federal Reserve are working on it. Fed Chairman Powell says the country is battling inflation head on. The central bank has raised interest rates and will continue to do so until inflation is under control. Meanwhile, in August 2022, President Biden signed the Inflation Reduction Act of 2022 into law. The spending package is expected to reduce the deficit by more than $300 billion in the next decade. It's not a fix that will happen overnight, but there's hope.